Hello, friends. Welcome back to the While We're Waiting Hope After Child Loss podcast. I'm Jill Sullivan, your host and one of the co-founders of the While We're Waiting ministry. This is a podcast of stories, stories of devastating loss and grief and heartbreak and struggle, and stories of hope and healing and faith, and yes, even joy. Underlying every conversation is the hope we have in Jesus Christ, which makes it possible to not just survive the loss of a child, but to live well while we're waiting to see them again in heaven one day. You can learn more about our ministry and the free bereaved parent retreats we host by visiting our website at www.whilewe'rewaiting.org. Welcome to episode number 223, which is a continuation of my conversation with Billy and Julie Melton. The Melton's adult daughter, Juliana, went to heaven in 2018 after a courageous battle with brain cancer. Today, we discuss a wide range of topics, including the holidays, the marriage relationship after child loss, their favorite books, God's purposes and suffering, and the ministry they started to support grieving parents in their area of North Carolina. We're going to jump right into our conversation right where we left off last week. I hope you'll be encouraged by listening in. So we know that birthdays and holidays and heaven days, you know, here we are in the fall of the year, we're going to be moving closer to Thanksgiving and Christmas and those kinds of days. We know those are difficult after the loss of a child. Has your family developed any special traditions or remembrances that have softened those days a little bit? Well, we like to party. <laughs> and so on her birthday, we used to go to one of her favorite restaurants and eat food that she yeah. loved. She loved to eat. Yeah, well, our and family she, loves to eat. She's a tiny little thing, too. It just blows our <laughs> sweet thing. And then uh, <laughs> Ju- Julie and Jessica and I usually go to this memorial area that we've established over at the park next door where we walk our dog every day. Yeah. And uh, during her birthday month, one of our favorite local uh, Greek restaurants honors her, and they invite us to a dinner with wow. family and friends and uh, they provide the dinner, and we just celebrate her life at that time. Yeah, her birthday's in March, so it's pretty close to her um, heavenly um, homegoing day, February 14th and then March the 8th. So um, there's spe- special things that we do you know, on those days, and then there's special things we do every day, and we remember her yeah. every day because um, that park is also the park that our daughter Jessica ended up getting married because of COVID, everything shut down and she and Holden married and Brian was her man of honor. And it was Mm -hmm. so sweet because it was right in the meadow, right beside Juliana's memorial area. And it was just, it's just, you know, God knew that he knew that wasn't the original plan, but it was just the sweetest, sweetest celebration. It was just a sweet little wedding. We had less than 20 people Mm -hmm. and, um, Yeah, one thing you need to understand about our family, too, is (laughs) my wife is an awesome cook, and we have a lot of great fellowship around the table. And so, Uh you know, even when Julianne and Brian met at Cracker Barrel, uh, she ordered (laughs) Uncle Herschel's breakfast plus a side of chicken and dumplings. Brian's like, this is not a girl that eats like a bird. I like this girl, he said. I like this girl. Oh my goodness. And so that's one of the things we do too, is she loved Cracker Barrel. We might go to Cracker Barrel and we always remember her. There's no way we can go to Cracker Barrel without. Sure. sure. um, But the first holiday, uh, we decided to do something different. And so our son and law Brian coordinated a trip to North Carolina mountains and it was a location we'd never been. Mm -hmm. And so the four of us went with our dogs to the mountains and we yeah. honored and remembered Juliana um, and all that she meant to us. It was really a special time. It was hard. It was so hard because it, it was just so different. And it was like, she's supposed to be here, you know. Yeah. We yeah. knew, Jill, I think that it would be too tough to do our normal Thanksgiving at home. We just didn't really want to be around families, have all the questions. We just didn't think emotionally was to handle it. So mm-hmm. going somewhere completely different create new memories. I mean, we're all about making new memories and Juliana mm-hmm. was all about that too and making new adventures and memories. So this really seemed to work for us, especially that first Thanksgiving. Yeah. But since that time, we've really done a lot of different things and gone different places over the years. 
uh, we've celebrated with Jessica and her um, husband Holden. And that's been really sweet and special because, you know. Yeah, I think every family has to find what works for them. Yeah. And I love that you gave yourself permission yeah. that first year to do something different and maybe start a new tradition. Yeah, and that's what we really share with other people is that give yourself you have permission to do something different and the holidays are never going to really be the same. They're always going to look different. Right. So mm -hmm. you can, you can keep some of the same traditions and then add new ones. Yeah. That's kind of what Absolutely. we've done. Make new ones. And that yeah. was something uh, we always had a motto in our family is not making time, but making memories. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to yeah. explain that to people when a, a normal <laughs> six hour trip would take us 10 hours. It's oh, like, right. We don't make time. We make memories when we travel. Yes. I love that. I love that. So we know that husbands and wives can very often grieve differently. What has been your experience with that? Yes. Overall, we do recognize that, Jill, that we grieve differently and we pro process grief differently. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I um, have done, I was never a journaler. And so I started journaling and I've been journaling for the last six and a half years. Yeah. And it's been so, such a good outlet for me. And it's been powerful. It's a way for me to write prayers to the Lord, you know, write letters or prayers to Juliana, you know, specific annual things like that. Um, and then also a way to share with others if they're really hurting. I can pick my journal up and look at my date and maybe share some encouraging words or scripture to that person or that couple. We've, we've really yeah. been able to do that. Um, I know we mentioned earlier reading books by Christian authors that had really experienced child loss, that really understood yes. what we, you know, and that's something that's been helpful. We also... We discovered, uh, we had read one of Randy Alcorn's uh, fictional books, but yeah. we discovered his book on heaven and, mm -hmm. and some other books he wrote. We love Dave Brannon. Elizabeth yeah. Elliot and the Guthrie's, yeah. um, and then we went to grief mm -hmm. counseling. Hospice was part of the, the of the last few days of Juliana's journey, and so we took a step. We know God can use anything, and so God connected us with a, a real um, Christian um, counselor, and so we went yeah. to a support support group there and and um, couples counseling for uh, uh, about six months, and that was really helpful. And it was interesting, a, a person that. Julie probably wouldn't have expected to give her a book, gave her the one year book of hope that yes. Nancy Guthrie wrote. And uh -huh. when I first started reading this or, or Julie was reading to me, I was like, this book is raw, but I love it because that's exactly yeah. where I am. You exactly. know, I'm very raw right now and uh, she gets it. Yeah. Yeah. Anything written by Nancy Guthrie, I think is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. All of her books are great. And that one year book of hope is, is fantastic. Just a little bit to read every day. Yeah. And I love the book too, that, um, was selections from, and stories from that, um, Laura and, um, Gary, the houses have, have put together yes. and you're, you're in that mm -hmm. book, y'all story, yes. and Brad's story. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've just, that's been a huge blessing that just, I was just drawn to y'all story because it's so similar yeah. to ours. So yes, thank it you is. for sharing mm -hmm. that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a great book because it's a compilation of all different kinds of stories, different types of child loss, and it it's very helpful uh, just to read other people's stories and then their words of encouragement and favorite scriptures and those kinds of things. I'll put a link to that book in the show notes. That would be there great. may be some yeah. that want to look that one up in particular. Uh, one of the things that we were going to say too is that we tried to get into a routine. One thing that was really difficult for for us really together. I know you said individually me, but was to really return to church uh, right yeah. away. So we really worshiped in the quiet space of our home. You know, we started, eventually started attending regularly uh, with Jessica, which was such a blessing. Um, and then this was the church that Juliana originally introduced us to. So, and that's where we are now. You know, but, it was so hard going back to our church where we'd been for 20 years because I would see people approaching across the parking lot that I knew would have questions that I didn't want to answer. I just yeah. didn't want to. And sometimes people would say, you know, something and we'd say, well, it's good to see you too. You know, they say the hardest question, how are you? Well, yeah. 
this right. minute I might be pretty good, but give me a couple minutes and I'll probably be a mess. And, yeah. you know, we, we learned ourselves that we didn't know how to talk to people. And, you know, we had to relearn how to talk to people who were experiencing grief. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we found comfort in being with others that really understood and the faith community rallied around us. Um, even the ones that hadn't experienced child loss and didn't necessarily, you know, they weren't really walking, they, they were pulling together and they were rallying around us. Um, and I would say too, that our family, um, my mom and dad really helped hold our family together with prayer and God, he knew that. And, you know, they were still with us at the time. So, um, but, you know, death rocked our family to the core, but we never doubted God's goodness, Jill. Mm. Yeah, that's a powerful statement. Amen. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. So I think all of us that have lost a child have this very sharp dividing line in our lives of before and after. Talk about the before Billy and Julie and the after Billy and Julie. Well, we realized that we didn't know as much as we thought we knew. <laughs> so true. Yes. And we were the same and yet we were different. We, you know, we realized that God, he went through all of this before we did. So he knew, he understood he was the safest person we could really turn to. I mean, where yeah. else could we go? You know, I think we would begin to really depend on him more um, just for our daily bread. I mean, our daily, yes. you know, the moving and the flowing of just getting through the day. Everything just was different. I mean, we're, we're never going to be the same. I went back to work and there was times where I would get triggered by a memory or a song, a picture, and I would just be paralyzed. I mean, mm. and so we began to see, and I think uh, maybe Elizabeth Elliot shared this, just to do the next thing. That was really all we could do is to just focus on do the next thing. Lord, just help me know what the next thing is that I need to do. I can't handle all these thoughts, all, you know, the past, the present, future. I need to focus right now just on the next thing. And I thought a lot of times I would think, you know, the WWJD, you know, that came out way back. And I think, what would Juliana do, WWJD? And she would do the next thing. She lived in the moment with the youthful spirit. And so, you know, when I went, returned back to work, I had an incredible support system. I wouldn't have made it through that journey with all the time I took off and to be able to be there, you know, front and center to um, help care for Juliana. But I was so blessed to have, um, I mean, my boss was said, if you need to leave. So there, there would be times daily, I would just leave and go take a walk or go to the car and cry. And so, uh, you know, I gradually, you know, um, returned to work. It was a while before I did full time. We took some time off to really grieve. And, yeah, you know, so that was was very helpful. Mm-hmm. So what have you learned about God and his character through your journey with Juliana? You just said that you learned that you uh, didn't know very much. <laughs> um, so what, what what are some of those things that you did learn? Yeah, yeah we certainly learned that we didn't know as much as we thought we knew. That's I don't right. know what we thought we knew, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, well, um, and I had the same experience. Exactly, so that's, right. That's interesting. Um, well, we struggled for years trying to understand how God could use her life more in heaven than on this earth. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. And, you know, we had lots of conversations with our daughter, Jessica, we, with the Lord um, and, and other wise individuals. But we came to understand that um, his idea of goodness and his timing is different than ours. And one of the scripture that we have, you know, clung to, among many others, is Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so... Um, there probably isn't a week that goes by now. It was daily then, but a week now that, you know, that I just refer to that verse. You know, Julie always <laughs> said that Romans eight twenty eight was her life verse. Yeah. That God yeah. works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. But this with Juliana, it just took this to a whole new realm of what is God's sovereignty really about? And sometimes it's it's totally different than what we want or think we want or need, but 
he has a purpose for everything, for good and his glory. That's the main thing, his glory. We knew that Juliana's life and the way she died was to his glory. And, you know, we have to trust him. You know, she would be, as Brian, I remember saying um, way back, he said, you know, if just one person came to know Jesus through all of this, Juliana would say it was worth it. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, we discovered there's purposes for suffering in our life. We found Romans 5, 2 through 5, talks about how suffering develops perseverance. Perseverance works character, and character brings hope. And hope does not disappoint because God has poured out His Holy Spirit in us. And, you know, it's such a gift that God could use that, you know, used it on in His own Son. That, you know, for the joy set before Him, you know, Jesus endured the suffering. And that's, we need God's help to open our eyes to that, that there's a purpose for suffering and that there's a, a goal that he's not satisfied with us staying the way we are. You know, he wants us to be more like his son and to be able to endure and uh, help others endure while we're walking through. Like Julie said, this is not our home and we got to help each other get through this, this life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've That's right. um, have really since then, Jill, I've um, faced, you know, early, even er, probably more so earlier, earlier in our journey, but still it pops up um, guilt, you know, that, you know, the shoulda, coulda, would is the if only sure. mm-hmm. um, learning to lay those down every day if they come up or when they come up. Um, yeah. You know, wise friend shared with me and this is I've really clung on to this that you know, we did the best we knew how to do at the time with the information we had. And then knowing God holds the keys to death in the grave and revelation, it talks about that. And so that's really been powerful for us too, Jill. Um, and that death is a doorway. We really go from this life to life in the presence with Jesus. And that's what Juliana did. Yeah. Um, and then one other verse that we really have clung on to is Second Corinthians 4.18 that everything in light of eternity, that fixing our eyes on the unseen. And so I have to ask Jesus all the time, show me what I don't see and thank him for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great scriptures, great advice. All of that was excellent. Thank you all for sharing that. And you guys have started a ministry called Restoring Hope there in Greensboro, North Carolina. I would love for you to tell our listeners about that ministry. Obviously, God has called you to minister to other grieving parents. So talk about exactly what He's called you to do. Well, one of the things that God has really given us boldness to to serve um, and share the gospel like our daughters Mm -hmm. have. And He continues to open doors, Jill, for um, as other parents are experiencing child loss. Yeah. And I think you, you know, life is so short that we we are looking for opportunities and he just opens the door. We've clung to him to be able to show us how to grieve well and as those with hope and how to share with others. So we formed this ministry in 2021. We partner with um, several local churches. You know, Restoring Hope is a support group for parents and couples who've experienced adult child loss. Um, We... um, come alongside others in their grief journey. We provide you know, encouragement, education, and biblical hope. We just want them to know that they're not alone. And you focus on a, the loss of an adult child with your group. At the time, you know, we, there were so many folks that had lost adult children that it, it just, the groups just started forming. And we try mm-hmm. to keep it, including us, to 10, 8 to 10. And, you know, we meet monthly and we talk about different topics each month. Yeah. And yeah. we always want people to leave with, you know, asking them to think about and doing something that brings them joy mm. each month. And then when we get back together, we might talk about that and we might talk about something really difficult they faced. Our groups have been small, Jill, maybe two to four couples, but they've been real personal and intimate and raw. And I think people have really found a place where they can share safely Mm -hmm. with people that get it. And although we have an agenda, we're open to what the Holy Spirit has each week because 
there may be something that overrides what we were going to say and just ministering to people's where they are is, is what our heart is. And, um, we're just thankful that, uh, you know, God has been faithful to provide a place, a really nice place to meet. And, you know, that there's a real crisis in, in our community and in many communities with this fentanyl that, so we've seen, we've ministered to quite a few that, uh, face that and it's, it's hard. I won't yeah. lie. It's, it's hard. And, w- you know, we have seen every type of child loss. And, and you know, regardless of what the means was, it's we are all connected because we've lost a child. And That's we're right. with other people that get it. And we just want to provide a safe space we, where we can love people well. We're just a few years ahead of these people. We don't have all the yeah. answers. You know, we just want them to be, to know that they're loved. You know, we do read scripture and prayer. And one of the things that's been helpful for us and we've gotten feedback from folks is that um, sharing some of the reading selections that have really touched our hearts uh, from some of the books that we've read, um, some of the yeah. authors. And so that's been really beautiful. And and one group that we had, we got together several times for fellowship and we're still staying really connected. So it's just the the, the uh, dynamics and makeup of each group is different. That was a group, yeah. I believe, where we had eight, four couples, didn't we? Four or five couples. It was really four couples. Mm-hmm. So it was really sweet. Yeah. Very cool. Now, do you all have a website? How can people get connected with you? Yeah, we are still, um, you know, we're, we're still, we're making progress, <laughs> but uh-huh. we don't yet. But they can get in touch okay. with us through my email. Um, okay. Which is, you've got that, Jill, Julie R. Melton yes, I do. at gmail.com. So. Um, and then we can, we all, we love to, I love to connect people with resources. We do that with our, the group attendees. Um, we provide books on grief. We provide um, just a lot of different resources. So. Yeah. That's amazing. What you're doing is very important. And it's a real yeah. privilege. I think that's been part of our healing journey that yeah, people have said, you know, that they really, um, we've gotten some really positive feedback and. Yeah. Uh, and lots of encouragement from the community and from the church, the faith community and the community at Excellent. large. I think anybody would be comfortable coming to the group. You know, we mm-hmm. don't, we, uh, it's definitely, um, you know, biblically based, but mm-hmm. we make it, you know, we, we all have the loss in common. So that's right. That's right. I will put your email address in the show notes then. So if people want to get in touch with you and learn more about restoring hope um, or what, you know, maybe gets you to get them connected with some resources or anything like that, they can reach out to you. So thank great. you for that. And we've, we've, we've pointed some, pointed some of our uh, group to, to your um, ministry uh, while we're waiting uh-huh. um, as yeah. well as other ministries too. We've pointed them sure. to, so that's been beautiful. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, we we all need to work together. That's right. That's right. We're all a team, aren't we? We're all on the same team. That's exactly yeah. right. We are all on the same team. Yes, I appreciate that. So, one last question I always like to ask: Has music been an important part of your grief journey? And if so, what's on your playlist? I would say that yes, music is a huge part. For us, individual and corporate worship has been a yeah. great time of rejoicing, of tears, of just a release of emotions. Our son-in-law Holden plays in the worship band and just being able to worship with he and Jessica, our daughter, has been such a huge blessing for us. Yeah. So you prefer live corporate worship. That's not on a playlist, is it? You've got to go in person to experience (laughs) that. I love it. And sometimes we, you know, we'll play music around the house, but, uh, and then when I'm in the car, sometimes I just want it quiet and silent. And I know Juliana was a big worshiper and we used to go to concerts together and worship together. Um, But sometimes I do love worship in the car, but I feel like I really enjoy it more corporately, Mm -hmm. you know, or at Christian concerts too. We, we have a lot of special, you know, memories there. When, Jill, when we were young in the faith in the seventies and eighties, uh, yeah. The worship was, how can I say, more simple. It was just scripture songs with simple melodies. And sure. we still know all of those songs by heart. So a mm-hmm. lot of those have been, I think, rebirthed in us as, as we've 
gone through this. I know I sang all the songs I knew to Juliana uh, mm-hmm. while she was going through the process, and we continue to sing them to one another and teach them to our small groups. And uh, yeah, because there's just songs that they're straight out of the scripture that just have stuck with us. And you know, we love this one that we sang for our group when we went to Shonda's. It's it's in Isaiah 61 that. It comes right after Jesus, inter- you know, the verses when he introduced himself in his town that, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to set free the captives, to the blind are seeing, the lame. Yeah. Well, right after that, these scriptures come where it says, and we'll sing it for you. Okay. I would love that. He gives yes. us beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we might be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And, you know, God knew that joy and sorrow were mixed together. And when, when we have a right perspective on it, it brings glory to God. Amen. Oh, I love it. And I love when you have scripture like that set to music. Yes. And you learn that and that's part of just what's in your brain. Yeah. And when you go mm-hmm. into a, ser- a season of suffering that lasts years. Yes. Yes. Those are the kinds of things that come back and that carry you through. Yes, they do. And uh, that's why I love so much that you guys sang that for us today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank y'all. Well, we're about to wrap up our conversation. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we go? Well, um, I know I mentioned some some of the memorial areas that we um, established in Juliana's honor um, that were significant. And we also, one of the other things we've done, Jill, which has been so beautiful to see how God is using this, we established a scholarship in Juliana's memory at Regent University. Uh, for a graduate student that wants to go into public service. We, um, you know, have, have gotten letters back from some of the recipients, and it has just touched us so how they are going back and making a difference in their community and their country. Mm-hmm. And I know that Julianne is rejoicing in the heavens. Um, and, and, and we've been able to, it's been touching to see her beautiful legacy glorifying God through these individuals who are making a difference. So, Mm -hmm. you know, she's continuing on, even though she's rejoicing in the heavens. Also, we just, we've experienced joy in the midst of sorrow. And we know, we just want people to know that God uses everything for his glory and our good. All we have to do is really trust him. And also just serving. We found that that really has helped us move through our journey, you know, and, it's part, it's been helped us really through our healing journey. So, yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, Jill, for letting us speak with you today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's been such a blessing. Well, thank y'all. We can't wait till we get to meet you in person. We want to come to Arkansas. I know. We need to make that happen yes, soon. Yes. Yes. We've never been to Arkansas. That's, that's well, you've got to come. You've got to come. Hot Springs, Arkansas is, is a great place to visit. So we welcome you anytime. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the While We're Waiting, Hope After Child Loss podcast. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, please take just a moment to leave a rating or a review, and please feel free to share it with someone you know who might be helped by it. We're so grateful for all of you who come back and listen every week, and those of you who may be listening for the very first time. I hope God has used it to encourage you today and to help you live well while you're waiting.